All right, what's going on, everybody? Broken Games HDR. All right, so this is my review for the season finale of the Last of Us HBO series, episode nine. I think it's it was called what was this episode called? I think it was called Look for the Light. I know I'm mad late, you know, um, to doing this. Episode came out Sunday. It's Wednesday now. I just didn't feel like talking about it yet, you know. So it's Wednesday, and I'm finally getting to it. So let's get right into it. All right, so. Episode starts out with um, Ashley Johnson, who plays Ellie in the game, um, and she's playing Ellie's mother, Anna, and she's running away, and she's pregnant with Ellie right now, uh, and she's running out of this forest to what seems to be a Firefly safe house, and um, she's running from a runner. I think it was a runner that was, that was chasing her. Um, like I said, she's pregnant, and by the way, this house looks very uh, strange. Uh, strangely like the house that Ellie and Dina live in at the end of Last of Us Part 2. Not, you know, speculating that it's the same house. It's definitely not. These are two different locations. Um, but it just looks very similar to the house they lived, that farmhouse they lived in at the end. Right? So she runs into the house. I think she locks the door. But the, uh, as I think we see later when Marlene arrives, the runner um, breaks through the window, goes, because uh, Anna runs upstairs, puts a chair behind the door. Um, you know, but the runner still, you know, goes upstairs and, uh, figures out, you know, just, I guess just randomly knew she was upstairs. She, she was making a little bit of noise. So I guess that's how the runner knew it ran throughout the whole house. And, uh, Anna's on the floor, you know, she's very much pregnant, you know, um, and all the stress that she's under, uh, probably, you know, in induces, uh, the labor. Um, because that's a real thing. Some people, I saw some people, you know, was, were like, were like, what? When she like gave birth, um, and didn't realize it, but that's actually a, a fairly common thing I've heard of, especially if a pregnant woman is, is like under extreme stress, they can give birth and not even realize. Um, but the runner, you know, the infected attacks her and she has the, uh, the switchblade, you know, the same one she gives Ellie because, you know, that's how Ellie gives it because. Uh, Anna gives it to Marlene to give it to, to give it to Ellie. Of course, uh, we learn about that in the, uh, if you, if you read the American dream, last of us, American dream, um, comic book, we actually learn that is actually the case, how, uh, Ellie, how Ellie gets it. So, um, during the process of fighting off this infected, uh, she does get bit on the leg, but she manages to kill the infected with that same switchblade. And um, during that process, Ellie is born, born right into, into, the, into violence, right? Born right into this violent world uh, due to a violent event. Uh, so, you know, you could see the symbolism in that. Um, Ashley Johnson giving birth. She is Ellie. She gave birth to the character, and now she's physically giving birth to Ellie. Yeah, all that good stuff. Um, and, you know, it's weird that we never actually see, we hardly see anybody get bit. In The Last of Us, every time someone someone gets bit, it's always hidden, and then we see they get bit. Anna, uh, not Anna, um, Tess, yeah, Anna, uh, uh, Sam, um, yeah, all, all of them get bit, and it's never like obvious that they get that they get bit. They always try to hide it to to make it a to make it a surprise. Um, so yeah, she gets she gets bit and she realizes she's she's bit. So she cuts the umbilical cord, uh, which is a very important point, which we will get to a little bit later. Uh, Marlene arrives a little bit later with a few other fireflies, and Anna has a knife pointed at her neck because obviously she knows she's uh, in, infected. And you know, she, even though it takes like what is it two days, like around forty eight hours to fully turn, obviously she doesn't want to turn um, when she has Ellie with her so she's not taking any chances um so she has a knife pointed at her neck ready to kill herself just just in case uh that's what uh, that seems seems what that uh why she was doing that um so of course anna begs marlene to take ellie and to uh you know just take take her because you know obviously she knows she has to die and begs marlene to marlene to kill her gives her the switchblade Marlene doesn't want to do it. They've they've known each other their whole lives. They're, they they like pretty much grew up together. They're close friends. Uh, Marlene doesn't want to do it, but you know she reconsiders and walks in and just does it very quickly. Gets it over with. Obviously, not something she wanted to do. And then we go back. Uh, it's spring now. These are at, 
a few months after the events um, of Ellie uh, killing killing David. Uh, and now she's like a little bit traumatized by it. She's still being, you know, affected by it. Joel is being very nice to her, um, but Ellie's mentally not there. You know, she's just mentally not present. Um, she's still like uh, affected by those events and a little bit sad or whatever. Joel being nice to her and all that good stuff. Get to a building. Um, and in this building, we get a little ladder segment. You know, there's a lot of those ladder segments in, 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 in the actual game and the, and the, and the patented Sony Boost, the patented PlayStation Buddy Boost. You know, they got that in a lot of their, a lot of their games. And this is the scene with the giraffe where Ellie runs off, sees the giraffe, and it's this magical, iconic moment in the Last of Us game. And now it's in the series. And I'm going to be real with you. This, this, listen. I'm just not like affected or blown away by this giraffe scene that everybody thinks is so freaking magical. I'm like, bro, it's a giraffe. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Seeing this majestic creature in a world that's so violent and it's still just, you know, existing and all that stuff and it's peaceful. Okay, cool, whatever. Um, like, bro, I got I got giraffes at my local zoo. So I'm sorry. I, it's, it's hard for me to care. I'm not sure which scene is more overrated, seeing Sarah die or this goddamn tall neck giraffe. I don't know. Um, but, you know, people love it. Well, let, me, let me not rain on people's parade. Be Mr. Negative, right? If y'all like giraffes and it makes y'all cry, go ahead and cry. Uh, so fast forward a little bit. You know, Joel and Ellie are talking. Joel reveals to Ellie that the scar he got was when he tried to unalive himself because he was, you know, depressed after Sarah died. He tried to kill himself, like, I think a few days after. So he tried to, you know, tried to take the, tried to take the quick way out. Um, they're walking. After that precious little bonding moment and everything like that, uh, they get ambushed by some fireflies. Um, they throw a flashbang bang at them. Obviously, they're, they're disoriented. Um, they knock Joel out, grab Ellie. Obviously, they don't, you know, know who Joel is. Um, and, by the way, obviously, I'm not going to I've I've harped on a lot of my complaints regarding this this show, the the skipping of certain action sequences, the, the skipping of certain moments that may not necessarily be absolutely important to the story beat, but I think is important for action and pacing. And of course, we don't get the scene where they go through the tunnel where there's clickers, runners, bloaters. I I already knew that wasn't going to happen. From the time they said this episode was going to be 40 minutes, this, they said this episode was going to be 40 minutes, and it was going to have a flashback in it. I was like, there's no way we get that. There's no way. I'm so, I, I said they're going to take some type of shortcut to get Joel, to the, Joel and Ellie to that hospital quick, fast, and in a hurry, and we don't get that, we don't get that scene. Also, the scene, you know, because usually what happens is uh, they get through that tunnel, um, little, what is it, little bus depot, uh, and you know, Ellie can't swim and, you know, she starts to start, starts to drown when the, uh, when, when the bus gets loose and, you know, they're in that tunnel foot filled with water and that's how they wash up on, uh, wash up near the hospital, yada, yada. So this was, this was the shortcut, the fast forward to get to this point. All right, cool. Once again, let me just say, uh, Neil Druckmann has done a few interviews since, uh, since Sunday and, uh, Craig Mazin, they, they have confirmed that uh, there are going to be more infected in season two. You know, I, I think part, part of it was due to budget, right? Part of it was due, due to budget. Part of the episode, there only being nine episodes is partly due to budget because this is still like a proving, you know, a, a proof of concept, right? I'm sure even though they had faith in Neil and, and especially Craig Mazin since he did that other show on, on, on HBO, um, you still got to prove yourself before you get the unlimited, gigantic budget, right? They still they had a pretty expensive budget, a pretty uh, big budget for this show, um, but for that bigger budget, yeah, they're gonna get that in season two. So we're we're hopefully gonna get more action scenes, uh, more uh, in infected because it was lacking severely. There were like what three and a half episodes with infected. The majority of the season. The like, no infected. I would like somebody to actually put up the minutes, the actual minutes of of screen time infected had in this season. I would love to see it. <laughs> it ain't too damn long. Um. Okay. So 
they get ambushed by the fly, fireflies. Boom, they're in the hospital. Okay. Uh, Joel, Joel wakes up. And, uh, you know, him and uh, Marlene are having that conversation. So Marlene explains to Joel why Ellie's immune, right? Now, in the game, all they really kind of tell us is, like, it's a mutation, right? They don't really, it's some type of mutation where the cordyceps is still in her brain, but it's just not attacking her, right? It's not uh, having the same effect on her like it would anybody else. In the, in the show, they explain it a little bit bit better and that's why the birth scene earlier was more was important um marlene explains that jerry anderson abby's father the lead you know the lead doctor believes that the cordyceps in ellie has been with her since birth it produces a chemical messenger that tells the cordyceps uh a, a chemical me messenger that court allows the cordyceps to think that she is the cordyceps so she's just kind of hiding in plain sight. It's kind of like a camouflage uh, chemical. So they want to reverse the engineer that uh, the messenger and um, and then mass produce it pretty pretty much. Uh, and then, yeah, cure. My, my thing is like, it would be hard to like replicate that scenario, but maybe you could do it where like, you know, okay. Because clearly I'm not saying, okay, maybe that was a one in a million chance of what happened to Ellie. But if you could replicate the scenario where pregnant woman gets bit, you cut the umbilical cord right at that. And my thing is, it it transferred to Ellie that fast because, okay, Anna got bit. And what, what did she cut that umbilical cord? Less than a minute later? It seemed like less than a minute later. I'm like, the cordyceps trans, like that, it transferred to Ellie that fast? I'm like, that shit transfers, like can move that fast? All right, cool. Um, but I, you know, I was like, maybe they could rep replicate that scenario to, you know, maybe they don't need Ellie, but you know, that would probably be hard to do. You know, there's not like a whole bunch of pregnant women lying, you know, lying around in the apocalypse and you know, you, it will be hard to do, but I just thought about that. Um, so Joel, you know, we, we, let's skip a little bit, you know, of course, Marlene wants Joel out because Joel wants to save Ellie because they, you know, he understands this, this would kill Ellie because the cordyceps are in the brain. Uh, Joel goes on the killing spree. The good old killing spree in the hospital, which we all love and all wait for and all anticipate. That's why I hate these bozos that be like, oh, you know, the killing and the action is not that important. Bullshit. Because we all look forward to that hospital scene. That hospital scene is iconic because of all the fireflies you, you, you kill. Um, so, and, and they have this really cool music playing. It's like, the, it's like a Grim Reaper theme uh remixed with the last of us theme is it's really cool and it but they go into like this montage mode where uh while joel is is, is killing everybody so it's 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 kind of montagey but it's it's decent i'm gonna say the scene i'm gonna say the scene is is decent um so yeah he's just mass murdering everybody in the damn hospital a lot less fireflies than we actually you know uh kill in the game which makes sense because there's only that many fireflies in the game for gameplay purposes um, so quick thing. So we see while Joe is killing everybody, we see, we see a shadowy figure run down the hall and that person gets away. And if you pause it, a lot of people have done this. They see a braid, right? And so, so it, they see a braid and people are, you know, thinking that's Abby. Now in the game, Abby was not in the hospital uh at this at this at this time she came to the hospital a little bit a little bit after now in an interview since sunday neil Druckmann has said that that is not abby running down that hall now it's either two it's, it's one of two things right either neil Druckmann is lying which he could be you know trying to fake out the viewers or what i think is more likely is this is a firefly that they are going to use as a witness to help Abby identify and find Joel in season two. Because this is, it's, it's, it's too blatant. It's, it's carefully put there. It's put, this scene is put there by design. They even, it's even cut three times to show you this person running down the hall. So the first scene, it's the per it's it's the shadowy figure running down the hall, right? And then Joel shoots the person 
shoots a firefly to the left while this person is running down the hall. Then the camera cuts to the angle, uh, the angle where the person is running towards the camera. And then it cuts back to another angle to see them running all the way down the hall and just running out of the hospital, we guess. That's not by, that's, that's not random. That's by design that they put that there. Because trust me, they're going to use that later. And I, like I said, I think it's going to be so that there's a witness that, so, that saw Joel commit these atrocities, that saw what he did in these hospitals, and he can be identified later and help um, Abby uh, find and identify him. Because that's one thing I learned about like directing, filmmaking, and movies or TV shows. Nothing is just random. Everything has a purpose and everything is done for a reason. You don't do something like that by accident or just or just cuz just happenstance no they're going to use that later i guarantee you they're going to use that they're going to like flash back to that scene and then we're going to find out who who this uh person was running down the hall in season two guarantee it put 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 everything on that so so that happens um and joel's killing montage uh continues right uh so then he walks into the surgical room and it's Jerry Anderson, Abby's father and the two nurses. And one of the, one of the nurses is, uh, Laura Bailey, who actually plays Abby in the last of us part two. And we know that Joel walks in this room, kill, kills Jerry. So just like earlier in the episode, we saw Ashley Johnson give birth to Ellie. Now we see, uh, Laura Bailey, Abby watches her father die. Thought that was uh, another kind of interesting perspective. Now, one thing I gotta, I gotta give this scene props. The way Joel kills Jerry is perfect. It's perfect because he kills Jerry like he is nothing. He kills Jerry like he is the most insignificant piece of trash that he just throws and tosses to the side. Like he's just how we essentially did it as players. That's how we killed, we, when we killed these doctors, whether we used a flamethrower, the shotgun, the El Diablo shot to the head, however we did it, we had no thought, we, never in a million years did we think, oh, killing all these people is going to have some type of consequence. And, and personally, that's one of the reasons why I love Last of Us Part Two so much. It's one of the few games I've ever played that holds the player a, accountable and you see the player or the, the character face consequences for their actions. There's not a lot of games that do that. There are hardly any games that do that at all. So that, to me, that's one of my favorite things about The Last of Us Part Two. It's, it's, it's accountability. It's consequences. Your choices have consequences. So the way they shot that was just perfect. Because Joel didn't even think twice about it. He barely even looked at Jerry when he shot him. Jerry, yeah, he, Jerry's a moron because he came at him with a scalpel. We know that. But Joel just, like, shot at him, like, eh, nonchalant, like, eh, pal, you're dead. Get out my way. Next, he didn't kill the nurses, you know, like us savages did in the game. But that, it, it, it just meant so much the way he killed him because Joel killed Jerry like he was nothing. but we know Jerry was everything to somebody else who was Abby. So Joel didn't even think twice. This person might mean some, something to somebody. This person might be special. This person might have a family. So he's nothing to Joel, but he's, every, he's everything to somebody else. And then that's when Joel creates his own monster and seals his fate. And then you see... They, they do that shot where he's dead and on the floor and, and that close-up shot where he just has that, that, that peephole in his face. And that's another shot they're going to flash back to in season two, probably while he's getting his, his face bashed in um, or his, you know, after that, after he takes that shotgun shot, that shotgun shell to the leg, whenever, trust me, they're going to, they're going to do that, 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 that slow flashback 
and, and that zoom in right on his face and be like, yep, this was the moment where you fucked up, Joel. Abby's coming. She's coming for that ass, Joel. And she's got her golf club ready. So Joel sees his face. That, that scene was perfect, though. That's, that was a great scene. Um, so fast forward a little bit, you know, Joel's running down with, uh, with, uh, Ellie and, um, and, you know, I, I thought it was interesting because, okay, we know that person who, who that shadowy figure is definitely at bare minimum a firefly, but I was a little bit surprised that, that he did leave the nurses alive because it's like, he's already gone full monster, full psychopath. I don't really know what sparing the nurses what sparing the nurses did because now there are, are essentially three witnesses but i guess those those uh nurses don't yeah they they're probably not going to have much i guess significance or or impact or you know um i guess they may may not even necessarily be loyal uh to the fireflies because they're not necessarily fireflies anyway but that firefly that's running away yeah um who eventually will probably become part of the wlf um so yeah we go into the garage and this is where joel kills uh kills marlene and even even when i played the game the first time i played the game i was bothered by joel killing marlene because and it and, and it shows it really shows that joel's a dickhead he's a jerk bro like and I, that's why I like all the Joel fanatics and the and the Joel apologists. I think y'all are I think y'all are insane. This man is a maniac. Okay, he's not okay. He's literally unstable. This man this man went through trauma, right, by losing his daughter, and now he will do anything, anything, even if it's irrational and unreasonable to save what he views as his new surrogate daughter doesn't matter doom you know humanity's chances at a cure doesn't matter if you think they were actually going to be able to cure it or not the man didn't know joel didn't know that when he made the decision so to him having his new surrogate daughter to fill that void and that hole in his heart was more important to him to his world he didn't care about the rest of the world. Him and his, his little bubble, that's all Joel cared about. It was the most selfish act in the world. Now, you could say that Marlene could have, you know, should have uh, given Ellie a choice, too. They could, they could have both agreed to, you know, w wake Ellie up and, and give her a choice. No doubt about that. I'm a reasonable person. I can agree, I can agree with that. But Joel wasn't going to do that. Joel was willing to lie, cheat, and steal. To keep his bubble, to keep his new reality exactly how it was with his new little surrogate daughter. That he didn't care what the consequences were. He didn't care what the repercussions were. That's why this man is fucking insane. And I don't know why y'all keep being apologists for him. See, because here's the thing. Y'all gotta realize, Joel didn't save Ellie for Ellie. He saved Ellie for himself. For his own. To fill the void that is in his own heart to because he lost his daughter. He didn't save Ellie for Ellie. Because, you know, oh, I want to save Ellie so, you know, so for, for just for the sake of herself. No, he did it for himself. It was a selfish act for him to give himself some type of happiness in this dark, cold world, which he has essentially has nothing. He didn't do it for her. He did it for himself. You need to realize that. And he's, he's, he's insane and he's unstable. I, I, I think y'all, I think y'all need to realize that. And it's like, he, he's, he's, I mean, he, I know there's no good or bad people in, in the last of us. There's just survivors, but it, it, it bothered me that he killed Marlene because listen, Marlene was like I said, even though there's no bad or good people, Marlene probably had the purest intentions in this whole show. He wa she wasn't a David, you know, she wasn't one of these other enemies that Joel has, has, has run into. He, she wasn't any of that. Marlene had a closer relationship to Ellie than Joel did. Joel went across country with her on this road trip for like, what did this equal to like a whole year? 
So you went on a trip with this little girl for a whole year, and now you think you just have the de facto rights to make decisions for her when her mother entrusted Marlene to her. So Mar this was probably harder for Marlene than it was for you. But that's the thing. Joel was doing it for him. There, you can't tell me, oh, Joel was closer to Ellie than Marlene. No, bullshit. Sheesh. He wasn't. He wasn't. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying. So that's why I was like, him killing Marlene clearly showed that he was just an, an irrational, like, um, it was all emotion. And, you know, I, I always get into this with the Joel fanatics, but his decision making was all emotional and based on trauma of what happened to him. The show, the show has, you know, very, the show in the game is revealed. He's a very, he's emotionally unstable character. Okay. But, uh, you know, I don't want to keep beating that dead horse. That is what it is. Um, you know, truth is in the, the proof is in the pudding. Just analyze this man's actions and he's, he'll show you who he is. And he has, he has showed, showed you who he is. Don't tell me about that. Oh, you know, you would do the same for your daughter. That's, that's not his daughter. I'm sorry to break it to you. That's not his daughter. It's not. It's not. He was a glorified bodyguard that ended up, you know, caring for this little girl, cool and dandy. But that don't give you authority to make decisions for her. It don't. So, you know. Willing to lie, cheat, and steal just to, and that, that's manipulation. He manipulated Ellie. Telling her that story at the end, how, how could you tell me he's right when he's, doing, when he's doing everything wrong to get his way? That's all this, this, all, that's all this was about, getting his way. Protecting his little bubble. For the uh, short little time that he has left in this world. But anyway. You know, he, and then they get to, you know, back to near Jackson. Joel tell, lies to Ellie, tell her there's, you know, there's more immune out, people out there. Uh, doctors couldn't uh, make any of it work. They stopped looking for a cure, yada, yada, yada. End scene. And that's a wrap. If I had to give, give this uh, season a score, I would give it a 6.5. And, you know, that's a, if you say a 6 is average, then I think this was slightly a above average so i'll give it a 6.5 but i think season two is a lot more promising and I'm, i think i'm gonna like season two a lot more like i said they're gonna have more budget they're gonna have more trust from hbo they could probably do more they're definitely gonna be more more episodes this is gonna be split into two seasons um but each season is gonna have more than nine episodes i assure you that uh because last a lot of stuff happened in the, in, in the last of us part two so yeah, follow me on Twitter, hit the like button, let me know what y'all think, I'm out of here, I'll catch y'all on the next video, I'm out of here, peace.